what's going on everybody my name is Matt welcome back to my YouTube channel in this video I want to talk about one of the greatest villains in not just Stargate but for me across all science fiction that villain being the Gwaul system lord Anubis Anubis was one of those villains in the Stargate universe that was so bad that even the Gwaul system lords themselves kicked him out they said that his crimes were so unspeakable even for them that they exiled him and if the Gwaul the system lords that oppressed an entire galaxy for thousands of years think that you have gone too far. You must be a really dark dude. And I want to explore that because he really is one of my favourite villains in the Stargate universe. Let's take a look at the history of Anubis because it's quite interesting. Thousands of years ago, Anubis was a warlord for the system lord Apep and... He basically earned his stripes by winning wars and winning battles in the name of Apep, which gained him respect from Apep, but it made the, the other underlords on, on the same level as Anubis quite jealous of him. Eventually, Anubis found these six jewels, um, which we later find out in Stargate SG-1 to be the Eye of Ra, the Eye of Hathor, uh, all, of these, all of these jewels, which essentially when combined, create a super powerful weapon that can destroy a planet. Now, he learned of this and decided he was going to kill Apep and take those jewels in order to take over the rest of the galaxy. But he underestimated the rest of the Underlords and the rest of the System Lords because they essentially teamed up to exile him from the galaxy. Ra started a civil war against Anubis which lasted 300 years and they eventually kicked him out. Anubis then returned wanting to basically rejoin the system lords and then said to them hey I will destroy the Asgard for you in return for you letting me be king of the system lords. I want to be in charge and Ra was like no no absolutely not started another civil war kicked him out and then attempted to murder Anubis. Now Anubis was quite clever and he'd already discovered ancient research on ascension by this point. So he allowed all of the system lords to believe he was dead and a thousand years had passed. Everyone thought Anubis was dead but then he returned. Now when he returned he was a half ascended being and it's quite interesting how that came to be. So a thousand years ago, he tricked one of the ascended ancients, Omer de Sala, who he'd met on Keb. Now, Omer de Sala was already kind of ostracized by the rest of the ancients at this point because she was helping lower forms, you know, people on our plane of existence to ascend, and they didn't like that. But she did it anyway because she believed everyone deserved the right to ascend. Anubis found out this information, went to Keb and spoke with Omer de Sala, done a lot of trials with her and eventually passed all of her tests. So she helped him to ascend. But it was only at the point of helping him ascend that she realised her mistake. She realised how evil and how horrible Anubis actually was and tried to stop the ascension process, but it was already too late. The others then got involved, the other ancients, and basically ostracised Omer de Sala even more and said, you know what, your punishment is that we are going to halfway descend Anubis so he can keep all of the knowledge that he has gained since he ascended that he would have been able to gain as a normal gold. He obviously can't keep knowledge of where the Lost City of Atlantis is, or where the Ori galaxy is, or things that he would never have found out as a Gua'uld, but anything else that he could have discovered, he can keep. And being halfway ascended means he's not a corporeal being. He's essentially immortal, which really screwed over the Milky Way galaxy, because upon his return, a thousand years after the system lord has believed him to be dead, 
Anubis came back with a vengeance. If you're enjoying this video so far, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Whilst you're down there, leave a like and a comment because those things really do help with the algorithm. Anubis operated in the shadows for quite a while, using rival system lords such as Osiris to do his bidding. He essentially used Osiris to gain entry back onto the council of the Gua'u system lords. Now he'd also been very very busy during this time because the other system lords remembering how Anubis used to be, how he was, didn't want him back on the council. They didn't want anything to do with him. You was the oldest of the system lords and he knew exactly what Anubis was like and he was very vocal about not letting Anubis join the system lords again. But that didn't stop him. Anubis waged a war with the other system lords, slowly defeating all of them, defeating their ships, their Jafar, and absorbing all of them into his own empire. He created an almost unstoppable super soldier known as a coal warrior, which was a genetically modified soldier, essentially, embedded with a Goa'uld host, which was utterly loyal to Anubis. With its armour that was basically impenetrable the advanced weapons technology it was an, an undefeatable and unstoppable foot soldier not only did anubis have super advanced weapons super advanced shields he was able to wipe out rival system lords fleets but these coal warriors were able to take people on on the ground and 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 essentially wipe out all of his enemies during this time, it really looked like Anubis was going to take over the entire galaxy. It wasn't looking good. All of the system lords were falling. Every battle with SG-1, they ended up losing. And Anubis was gaining more and more power. Now, Anubis wanted to rebuild. He wanted the ultimate power in the galaxy. So he went after the Eye of Ra, which was part of those six jewels that I mentioned earlier on in the video. With these jewels, he was able to create a super weapon that could destroy a planet, and he eventually went on to destroy Abydos. Thankfully, an ascended Daniel Jackson and Omar Dissala stepped in right before he destroyed Abydos, and they ascended all of the people, such as Skara, Shari's father, all of them, they all ascended, they're all absolutely fine, so happy days. But now Anubis had the jewel and he was unstoppable. Now something Anubis couldn't retain after he was halfway descended was the location of the lost city of Atlantis. A city ship built by the ancients which is filled with technology and treasures and all of the knowledge that the ancients had gained prior to their ascension. Anubis had learnt that the Tauri had possibly discovered the location of this ancient city and decided to attack Earth. Using his coal warriors, using his ships, a battle ensued over Antarctica where Anubis would eventually get defeated. Or so it seemed. You see, at this time, Jack O'Neill had absorbed the knowledge of the ancients again by sticking his head in one of those machines. He was able to activate an ancient weapons platform in Antarctica, which was able to fire off ancient drones which destroyed Anubis's fleet. It looked like they had defeated Anubis once again, but Anubis being a non-corporeal being was able to survive, existing only as energy. He jumped around from host to host for quite a while, taking over various members of the SGC before demanding being let through the gate, where he would then take over other people in the galaxy and start to rebuild his empire. He would jump between hosts as each body would deteriorate, and he set his sights on an ancient device found on Takara. Now, Takara had a device on it which essentially the ancients used to seed all life in the Milky Way galaxy thousands of years ago, prior to a plague breaking out and wiping out nearly everything in the Milky Way. The ancients used this to repopulate the galaxy, but Anubis was going to use it to wipe out every corporeal life form. So he could reseed it to his own specification and become the true emperor of the Milky Way galaxy. This would have been an utterly devastating thing to happen to the galaxy. Because he would have likely branched out to other galaxies after that. Perhaps he would have went to Pegasus. Perhaps he would have went to the Ida galaxy. And as a half-ascended, basically immortal being, 
He was unstoppable. But Omar Dasala was able to step in. You see, there's a place that exists between planes of existence. You have our plane of existence, the higher plane of existence, and then multiple layers in between there. Omar Dasala, Anubis, and at the time Daniel Jackson, because he was not quite ready to fully ascend, existed on a plane just above ours in what looked like a diner. This celestial diner was essentially a halfway point between our plane of existence and the higher plane. Daniel Jackson met Anubis on this higher plane and decided to try and stop him, but couldn't because he had no power, only being halfway. Inspired by Daniel's courage, inspired by Daniel wanting to do right by the Milky Way galaxy and wanting to make right the mistakes he had made thousands of years ago, Omar Dasala engaged Anubis in a battle and a battle that would last an eternity because neither of them would have won. They were both matched in power. None of them would have defeated the other, meaning Anubis's influence on the physical plane would have been severed. To this day, Omar Dasala and Anubis are still battling, making it so Anubis can never interact on the physical plane and cause the havoc that he wanted to. But what would happen if that battle was to end? What if Anubis was to ever return? As a half-ascended being, he is essentially immortal. How do you defeat someone who is essentially immortal? Now, we do know about the Sangral. It's a, basically a weapon that can destroy ascended beings. So we know it's possible to defeat them. But doing so would likely destroy the rest of the ascended ancients. So how do you defeat just Anubis? I believe he's going to return at some point. It makes a lot of sense for Anubis, one of the ultimate villains of Stargate, to come back at some point in the future. But what do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I thank you for watching.